Tracy Power with the Midday News. Openamada District, situated in the Henga province, recently faced a significant blow as landslide ranked OVIC in the region. At the end of March 2024, reports emerged detailing a devastating landslide at Hunda village in Minab Valley along the island's highway, leading to the Pogara mine. According to the footage and information supplied by a local news reporter, four individuals were tragically buried alive, while ten others sustained severe injuries requiring hospitalization. The landslide occurred in the final week of March, resulting in an obstructed section of the island's highway, disrupting the flow of commuters and impacting the supply of essential resources like food and fuel as well as general service runs in the area. Heading to the west, every rains persisted, leading to yet another landslide over the weekend. I'm, I think, biggest landslide. I'm hosting about uh, 30 to 40 meters long. Uh, I'm here, not a lot of upset too. Uh, Saying I don't know this love. I'm a... Uh, all man very lost sucks. All uh, more than uh, 50 to 60,000 population of sleep under Losaka. All walkabout come also. Or two or three kilometers long. Uh, due to this uh, big uh, landslide, Mikla uh, stop also. Uh, Mikla uh, organize more monkey or rouse him because Mikla uh, maintain him this uh, peace. The Nakanai District Development Authority has taken a significant step forward in education, officiating and unveiling two brand new double classroom. These classrooms will serve the Hammonds Memorial Primary School in Iwasa and the Gamu Early Childhood Learning Center in East Nakanai, LLG. The inauguration ceremony was graced by none other than the Minister for Oil Palm Industry and Nakanai Member of Parliament, Francis Manake. Minister Manake, in his capacity, highlighted the importance of parental involvement in the upbringing of children, emphasizing that while the government continues to invest in educational infrastructure, parents must also play an active role. He expressed his vision for a future where the youth of Nakanai merge as productive individuals, contributing not only to the district growth, but also to the development of the province and the nation at large. The outgoing NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika clarified that he is awaiting administrative processes to complete before the handing over his current position to the new Metropolitan Superintendent. Sika said in the meantime, he is still the Metropolitan Superintendent of NCD. Sika said the date of the handover will be announced after all administrative processes are complete. Matsub Sika welcomed the new posting directed by the Commissioner, stating that it is a divine plan that was established for the purpose of serving the people of PNG. The officers were affected to, uh, given that uh, posting to uh, uh, new postings. And those directives, I call it, that's a divine postings, which means that we all sign on hold to take up the responsibility to save this nation and the country as well. So I look at, a, look at see it as a divine a plan where Heavenly Father uses our hierarchy to utilize us in a space where we can perform for the purpose of the good Lord in heaven, in saving our people. And that is very important. So in accepting that, and I'm still here waiting for the admin part of it to uh, solve all these issues back in the headquarters, I am still allowed to perform as a metro in this city. Bukdong Pikinini recently marked National Disability Day, celebrated every year on the 29th of March. BBP held an awareness event at its library learning centers with the team united in action to rescue and achieve the sustainable development goals for with and by persons with disabilities. BBP believes that practicing inclusivity and tolerance will help reduce the stigma around disability and provide all children with an opportunity to become literate and educated. BBP has students with different disabilities such as hearing impairment, physical disability and special needs. 
during National Disability Day included awareness to parents about different disabilities. Parents also learned how to count in sign language. BBP has had inclusive education programs since 2008 and has published two books, Create, create Numerous Education Materials and Will Publish a Children's Sign Language Dictionary later in the year. In regional news, a different perspective to inclusivity for those living with disability. For many Australians, shopping at makeup counters in departmental stores is a straightforward process. But for the people who are blind or vision impaired, it isn't so simple. Lives with a condition called septo-optic dysplasia. This condition affects early brain and eye development. I've, I've always been blind. I've been blind since birth. I've never seen colour, I've never seen shapes or anything of that sort. Despite having no light perception, Ms Eastham is passionate about makeup. The thing I enjoy about it is this sense of normality or sameness and empowerment that it gives me. But she says she finds that most products in the multi-billion dollar industry aren't accessible for people who are blind or vision impaired. And there's not really any education out there as to how to use them. Leah Curtis's eyesight has deteriorated to the point where she no longer has any central vision. I can see you, but I can't see your features. Having worked in customer-facing roles throughout her career, Ms Curtis found that losing her vision hasn't changed her desire to look her best. My personal presentation is really important to me. Um, it gives you confidence. Ms Curtis attributes the lack of accessible beauty products to stereotypes. There is a misconception out there that people who can't see are not interested in makeup and not interested perhaps in looking their best. But people who are vision impaired want to be seen just like everyone else. They like to wear things that flatter their face to bring out certain features. It's, there's no reason why we shouldn't and don't feel the same way. The Retailers Association says the beauty and makeup industry in Australia needs to catch up to the global market. We're not leading, but we're certainly fast followers. I think from my point of view, it's not just a moral choice, it's the right thing to do, but it's also a strategic imperative because if those brands want to grow, they need to be inclusive. There are around half a million Australians who are blind or vision impaired, a sizeable market to invest in. It is the only program like it in the Southern Hemisphere. In a workshop in Brisbane, people who are blind are learning wood turning and the dangerous equipment hasn't been modified. Make sure you give it a wiggle, make sure it's locked in. All good? All good, go. Sounds, smells and sawdust. In this workshop, the touch of timber is paramount. I've been um, totally blind since birth. Renee Kelly picked up the tools two years ago, learning the craft from scratch. Oh, I made all sorts of things, a jewellery box, um, made the set of drawers, a uh, bedside table. Touch wood, we have not had an accident in this um, facility. Nathan Price, who is legally blind, helps teach wood turning at Vision Australia. That was a, a, a learning uh, curve for myself, uh, using that technology. But once I was able to learn it myself, I could pass it on to the clients. All the equipment is stock standard. It will surprise you, but there is no extra uh, adaptions put onto any of the machinery. With the focus on other senses. We ask them to look at the wall and use their ears, use their hands and feel the job, listen to the way it's cutting. It's nerve-wracking to start, but Renee Kelly's new skills have given the 33-year-old more confidence and independence. It's just been just an awesome journey and, you know, really one that I really want to continue. In sports news, three tries to Ansley Sakin help the Harab Black Orchids win their second Sports Talk Rugby Sevens Tournament Cup title after holding off the Garahu natives 22 points to 7 in the field's encounter at the St John Guys Stadium yesterday. Since their last win in 2022, the Black Hawkeyes returned with full strength to reclaim the cup title. The Garahu men were, home, were no match to their field's opponents in the drazing afternoon in Port Moresby. 
After the match, Black Hawk Kids Captain Solomon Simoso said they had very good preparation ahead of this tournament and the result shows for itself. Commenting on Sakin's performance, Simoso said the young lad has been the best for the Black Orchids in a number of sevens competition. The Hara Black Orchids went home with 20,000 Kina cash prize and 2024 new Power Sports Talk Rugby Sevens Cup. Australian professional boxer Tim Tizu suffered a first loss of his professional career after an extraordinary and bloody showdown with Sebastian Fandora in Las Vegas on Sunday, 31st March. After a fight resembling a vigorous bare old teeth war between two lions in the wild, the Australia lost the two battle clash with the judge such a split decision. Fender, the 197 centimeters beanstalk from Florida, now owns the WB Ho and WBC Super welterweight titles after withstanding the Australian superstar over 12 punish rounds in Sin City. Here are the fight highlights. His fans and everyone who follows Fedor have always wanted him to establish the jab, and it takes a, a cut on the head for him to do it. I've done a lot of Fedora's fights, and believe me. There's a right hand by Zuba. Nice counter jab by Fedora. Now they're beginning to exchange a little bit more. Final 15 seconds, and we will let Fedora and Sue play it out as we arrive at the end of the first main event of the PBC pay-per-view era. That's it. That's the news update. Join us at 6 for more.